Hi everyone, this is Dr. Manjula Prasad Vastra. Today I am discussing one more important endocrine gland of the body that is pituitary gland. One more name for this is the hyphosis cerebri. This is small endocrine gland situated in relation to the base of the brain. It is also called as master of the gland because it produces a number of hormones which controls the secretions of many other endocrine glands of the body. So location it lies in the hypophysial fossa. One more name for this one is the pituitary fossa. So this pituitary gland is having above it is having star which pierces the diaphragm cell. This one diaphragm cell is nothing but the dura mater is having two layers outer endosteal layer inner meningeal layer meningeal la layer is again folded into many parts to make different compartments so diaphragm cell a is one among those folds of the meningeal layer of the dura mater so this pierces the diaphragm cell a the stalk of the pituitary gland and touches the floor of the third ventricle then its measurements it measures 8 mm antero posteriorly 12 mm transversely and weights about 500 mg then its relations superiorly it is related to the diaphragm cell a also it is related to the optic chiasma here optic chiasma comes i will show in one more figure later so diaphragm cell a optic chiasma tuber cinerium and also superior it is related to the infundibular recess of the third ventricle. So here it comes the infundibular recess of the third ventricle. And inferiorly for this I will show one more figure. Inferiorly it is related to the hypophysial fossa and then sphenoid A sinuses. And so here two layers of the dura mater comes. Irregular venous channels also lies below the pituitary gland. And on each side it is related to the cavernous sinus with its contents. Its cavernous sinus contents are the what you are seeing in figure. Accumulator nerve, trochlear nerve, ophthalmic nerve, maxillary nerve. Here also the internal catheter artery and absent nerve. So then the parts of the pituitary gland. For this I will show one more figure. So it is the pituitary gland. So this one is adenohypophysis or the anterior lobe. This is neurohypophysis or the posterior lobe. This adenohypophysis consists anterior lobe also called as pars anterior. This is the largest lobe of the gland. It also contains intermediary part that is called as pars intermedia. What you are seeing small area which is separated from the anterior part by an cleft. It also consists pars tuberalis or tuberal part. And then neurohypophysis consists of posterior lobe which is also called as pars posterior and then infundibulum and then median eminence. In relations I show, I told that superiorly it is related to the optic chiasma and also infundibular recess of the third ventricle. Then I will discuss very important part of the gland that is very important hormones secretion by the endocrine gland. So this one the rough figure this consists anterior lobe posterior lobe. The hormones which are secreted by the anterior lobe are so it is having chromophilic cells about 50%. So this consists of acidophils. Acidophils secretes the somatotropes. STH and then mammotropes, lactogenic hormone. It also consists basophils. They release very important hormones of the body, THS, thyroid stimulating hormone, ACTH, adenocorticotropic hormone, and FSH, follicle stimulating hormone, LH, luteinizing hormone. These are the hormones which are secreted only by the anterior lobe of the pituitary gland. Then what about the middle part or the intermediate part? So this intermediate lobe also secretes the MSH that is melanocyte stimulating hormone. Then the, this is the posterior lobe. 
here one thing we have to remember so the posterior lobe doesn't have its own hormones it carries the hormones which are secreted by the hypothalamus so these vasopressin and oxytocin these are the not own hormones of the posterior lobe of the pituitary gland these are the secreted by the hypothalamus then they are going to store in the posterior lobe of the pituitary gland then i will move to the blood supply for this i will show one more figure so it is supplied by the superior hypophyseal artery and by the inferior hypophyseal artery and then venous drainage by the nearby dural venous sinuses then i will talk very important part that is clinical anatomy so clinical anatomy we are dividing into for this i'll show the figure so clinical anatomy so mainly we are dividing into two aspects general symptoms and spe specific symptoms these general symptoms are due to when pathology is there in the pituitary gland this causes pressure over the surrounding structures so suppose if it causes pressure over the optic chiasma then it causes the bitemporal hemianopia so if it causes pressure over the hypothalamus then it leads to the obesity many times the large tumor of this pituitary gland may also press upon the third ventricle which leads to the rise in intracranial pressure then specific specific symptoms are so acidophil so these are the acidophils if adenoma is there these causes the acromegaly in adults and gingivitism in younger patients then here these are the basophils so basophil adenoma causes cushing's syndrome and then posterior lobe damage causes diabetes insipidus so these are the clinical anatomies of the pituitary gland thank you